Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Charges dropped against Wet'suwet'en activists in Canada. Israeli forces kill three Palestinians in violent raids. Chile's Constitutional Convention upholds reproductive rights. An Australian court reverses landmark climate ruling. In our first story today, charges against four Wet'suwet'en land defenders have been dropped in Canada. Indigenous peoples in British Columbia have been resisting the construction of the coastal gaslink pipeline for years. The 670-kilometer-long project will carve through 22,000 square kilometers of unsurrendered Wet'suwet'en territory. The CGL has defied a 2020 eviction notice issued by the hereditary chiefs and has also obtained an injunction by the provincial court. Meanwhile, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, or the RCMP, has repeatedly carried out militarized invasions into the land since 2019. In November 2021, indigenous activists shut down a forest service road to enforce the eviction order against CGL. However, RCMP forces soon stormed the blockade site and Camp Coyote. The protest camp was set up in September to block access to a drill site near the sacred Wetzinkwa River. 30 people were arrested, including four land defenders who were not in breach of the injunction. Coastal GasLink has now dropped the charges against the four activists. However, it has now asked the Attorney General to intervene and pursue criminal contempt charges against the others. But certain peoples have reiterated that the Canadian state has no authority on unceded lands. Despite this, RCMP officers have continued to enter villages several times a day to harass and surveil people. Police have also been entering the Giddington checkpoint camp, claiming to be on Crown patrols. Activists have said that there have been threats of arrest and vehicle information has been recorded. Hereditary chiefs have refused to meet with the government until the RCMP leaves the area. We now take a look at Israel, where security forces have killed three Palestinian men in the occupied West Bank and Negev desert this week. The Palestinian Health Ministry confirmed on March 15th that nine other people had been wounded. 17-year-old Nader Haytham Ryan was shot during a raid on the Balata refugee camp. He was struck in the head, abdomen and hand. A witness told Middle East Eye that Ryan was on his way to his family's tea stall when Israeli forces opened fire. Palestinian officials have confirmed three other injuries from live bullets and a stun grenade. The forces raided the Balata camp around 5.30 a.m. to arrest Amar Arafat. He was wanted for allegedly forming an armed group in Nablus. Arafat was arrested and Israeli forces were met with armed resistance while retreating. All shops and schools remained closed in Nablus on Tuesday for a day of mourning. On Monday night, the occupation forces also raided the Kalandia refugee camp near Ramallah. A man in his 20s, Allah Shah, was fatally shot in the head. Another six Palestinians were injured after confrontations erupted against the Israeli raid. The Wafa news agency also confirmed the killing of 27-year-old Sanad al-Harbad on the night of March 14th. He was shot by an Israeli special forces officer in the town of Rahat. According to the Wafa news agency, 20 Palestinians have been killed by Israel so far this year. Up next, Chile's Constitutional Convention has approved a historic article on sexual and reproductive rights. The Assembly has voted to add the legalization of abortion to the country's new draft constitution. It has also included a guarantee for comprehensive sex education in the text. The article was approved by 108 votes in favor, 39 against, and 6 abstentions on March 15th. This is the result of a campaign which had gathered 15,000 signatures in support for broader abortion rights. The procedure is currently only legal in cases of rape, fatal abnormalities in the fetus, or a threat to life. The text establishes that the state will guarantee the exercise of sexual and reproductive rights without discrimination. It will focus on gender inclusion and cultural relevance. All people with the capacity to gestate will be guaranteed conditions for pregnancy 
and a voluntary termination of pregnancy, protected childbirth and motherhood. The text also states that all people are holders of sexual and reproductive rights. These include the right to decide freely, autonomously, and to be informed about one's body and the exercise of sexuality, reproduction, pleasure, and contraception. The article further adds that the exercise of these rights should be free of violence and interference by third parties. Activists that had gathered outside the convention's building broke out in celebration after the vote passed on Tuesday. The Assembly is drafting a new Magna Carta to replace the exclusionary text of the Pinochet-era dictatorship. And finally, an Australian court has overturned a landmark ruling related to fossil fuels. In 2021, a judge ruled that the government had a duty of care towards children when it comes to approving extractive projects. As such, it must avoid causing personal injury or death to people under 18 due to carbon dioxide emissions. The verdict was in response to a lawsuit brought by eight school students and a nun. Environment Minister Susan Lay had appealed the decision. On March 15th, the three-judge bench of the federal court ruled in her favor. They stated that the decision partly reflected the tiny increase in risk from Whitehaven's Vickery coal mine in the state of New South Wales. Emissions from the project's coal burning were estimated to be equivalent to 100 million tons of carbon dioxide. It was approved by Minister Lay in September. Chief Justice James Alsop argued that the duty of care should not be imposed because of the indeterminacy of liability. He said that there was a lack of proportionality between the tiny increase in risk and lack of control and liability for all damage to all Australian children ongoing into the future. In light of the ruling, student activists have said that they will continue their fight for climate justice. Experts have also pointed out that while the court has denied the legal duty of care, it has not disputed the fact that climate change impacts young people. This will be important for other climate litigation. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.